I mean, just look at this stuff. It's beautiful. I might even be able to do this. <clears throat> ah. Sometimes you can split it in the midair. Get you guys in a little closer here. So look what else I got. Ooh. It's gonna be a fun day today, huh Natty? Yeah? Log dog back in action. <clears throat> you guys have pets at home? Just remember, you're their whole world. So why limit their whole world to your house? Like Natty goes everywhere with me. Granted, I don't have to go to a real job anymore, but still, you know, their whole life is you. Why limit their whole life to your house in their backyard? It's pretty lame. <clears throat> Hi, Natty. Go. She got a stick. <laughs> there we go. It's going to be a pretty one. This is a perfect piece to show you guys. This is how you make kindling. Get a nice piece like so. Grain, super straight, no knots. <clears throat> Get yourself a smaller axe. This is like a, a felling size axe. I can keep this in my belt. And this is what I use to pound wedges in when I'm felling. There we go. But it's still a good size. You could use a smaller, but this is about perfect for me. And then, uh, Proceed to make them a little bit smaller. These pieces I usually just throw. Then you take this nice pretty stuff. See now we got it to about there. Got a couple pieces. About as small as you want to go really because if it's good dry wood it's gonna go up you know gonna light up like the 4th of July this is yeah perfect kindling you know what after I do this I'm gonna show you guys how I start a fire in a wood stove or a campfire, either one. Yeah, we just want to keep doing this. If you're afraid of swinging it with your hand close to it, literally just set the axe on the piece and then pick them both up and just slam them against the wood until it starts to go in. It's that easy. This is a more precise way to do it if you want to get real fancy. Set her like so. 
now. Just because I am a perfectionist, I go one smaller on these. Like that. Even on this guy, I go one smaller. Set those off to the side real quick. See, even on a bigger piece like that, I was able to just set her on there and hammer down. So here's another little trick if you want. Pieces you just split, stick them back together, go the opposite way. Now you got two for one. Just like so. Now I'm going to show you guys how I make a fire. I'm not going to light it, obviously, but I'm going to show you how we set it up, okay? Uh, we'll pretend that this nice round right here is our wood stove, right? Every wood stove is a little different size-wise. Um, you know, you're going to want to cut your firewood uh, to the size that you need. Um, standard. Uh, like for me, if I'm selling cordwood, uh, standard length. So, obviously, this way, it's about 16 inches. It's 16 inches. So then, uh, when you do your stacks, um, a cord is four feet wide, four feet high, eight feet long. Um, just kind of, sort of like a full, full load in a standard truck bed. I think is kind of how they came to that measurement. Um, but yeah, I usually only do like quarter or half loads in my truck. But anyway, I digress. Um, I usually make my firewood about 14 because I've had a lot of customers uh, who can't do 16s. And uh, everybody can burn 14s, but not everybody can burn 16s. You know what I'm saying? So here we go. This is how I would start a fire. First off, I'm actually going to get a few larger pieces. Bear with me here. This will do. Alrighty. First I'm gonna get, we're gonna do, say three different size uh, classes. We're gonna do small, medium, and large. For reference, this is about medium, okay? And this or anything bigger is large, just for ease of uh, explanation here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually, uh, these are perfect. There we go, alrighty. What I'm gonna do is my first layer. We're going to do, uh, I feel like there's two real schools, schools of thought when it comes to fires. There's the teepee and the log cabin. And then there's a third, which is just like throw shit in a pile and light it on fire and hope it burns. Um, which works if you got good wood, but I prefer, I was taught, I think it's more visually appealing to set on fire the log cabin method. So, think about building a log cabin. Start with your foundation. Yeah, I'm going to ride this metaphor out. We're going to take, fill the bottom of our wood stove with what I would say big, medium, or small, large pieces like so. Then what I like to do is I go in my small pieces. And I got a lot of them for reference here. You guys ever play with Lincoln Logs? Well, then you already know what we're doing. We're literally going to. Just like we're back in grade school, we're going to build a little log cabin, like so. And I like to alternate. If I see one side, naturally, all the pieces aren't perfect, so 
so one side might start to get a, you know a little higher than the other leaning just try and make it uh, make it uh, stable enough you're gonna light it on fire so no need to be a real perfectionist but sometimes it's more visually satisfying and if you're gonna do something you might as well do it right you know so I do this and depending on how tall your wood stove is is obviously you know you're gonna want to leave a good uh, six to eight inches from the top of your wood stove because um, we've got one more layer so I build my framework like so I don't know if you could see that pretty well it's just a log cabin you know and then what I do is I take a bunch of newspaper um, you know spam mail anything you know any paper flammable uh, cardboard boxes um, anything like that and I fill in the whole center with all that stuff and I stuff it down and I try and fill this entire cavity with uh, with paper with you know flammables pun daddy huh. <laughs> and so uh, once you got that all full um, and believe me you're gonna want to fill the whole thing up because you don't want to just put paper on one side and light it and then you know only this side lights and then you know it's got to spread all the way around but once you do this then that's when I come back for my mediums like so and then I build my roof to my log cabin with my mediums <clears throat> let me make a couple more here just for just for fun anything worth doing is worth overdoing <clears throat> then I'm gonna go you know not all the way to the top but you know leave you know two or three inches um, you know you're gonna be reaching in the door so just try and you know fill the top up with these mediums and so my idea um, for this whole thing is you're gonna light that paper on fire uh, there's a lot of air uh, space um, in the structure in the smallest ones they're the ones that are gonna light first and if you know anything about fire you know you know paper is gonna burn you know really fast and it's not gonna have a whole lot of uh, like grabbing power like it's only gonna really um, light on fire things that are easily you know flammable like the small ones then once you get your small ones going they've got a little bit more you know strength holding power or whatever um, the technical terms like BTUs but um, they're the ones who are going to you know heat rises flames they're going to light your mediums on fire and then as this whole stack burns down it's going to get your big ones going and now you've got an entire bed of beautiful coals and you could throw anything in there you could throw wet bark in there and it's going to burn um, and now like you see I'll grab you guys <clears throat> this structure is almost too pretty to burn <clears throat> you know what I'm saying but you see look at all that air space in there that's what's gonna help your smalls catch on fire which in turn lights the mediums which is gonna get the bigs <laughs> just the way I do it um, thought I'd share you know I'm just out here spitballing splitting wood and uh, trying to create content, so there you go.